performance. Hello, brothers and sisters in .NET. Today we are going to speak about uh, performance mortal sins. It means that uh, we shall talk in general about uh, performance problems and solutions. Uh, we shall not dive very deep into details, very deep. I mean, of course, we shall discuss some issues. We shall not discuss some uh, uh, narrow uh, technologies. Everything will be in uh, more or less in general. What we need to do, first of all, like a first aid, what, uh, and what we shall, uh, shouldn't do in any, uh, in any way. So let's start. What shall we speak about? This is our agenda. Do you believe in performance as I do? Performance uh, really matters. We shall uh, speak why it is important. How we shall catch the demon, how we shall measure the performance. It will be the next topic. And uh, the sins, the first sin, last. We shall discuss uh, indiscriminate bullying expressions. In gluttony, we shall discuss memory and performance consumptions in strings. In pride, we shall talk about different collections and when and why one collection is better than another. During sloth discussion, we shall find the laziest loop. Uh, in envy, uh, sin, we shall discuss uh, querying data in loops and why it is not uh, ac uh, acceptable. In greed discussion, uh, we shall uh, discuss uh, uh, using of system resources. In wrath, we shall discuss furious error handling, what is the better way and why. And in the end, we shall talk how we can escape from performance sins. Uh, how to avoid expensive operations and what they are. So, let's go. Do you believe in performance? I do believe in performance because uh, it is uh, one of the main things we do. Usually, we don't pay much attention because it is related to technical debt and uh, many projects do not pay too much attention to technical debt, though they do. I can say that in one project, we always have time to uh, dedicate it to performance issues. And even now, uh, during this release, our uh, project uh, decided to dedicate all to performance and scalability. Why performance matters? Because first of all, it is customer satisfaction. Nobody loves dumb software. Uh, it is scalability. Because if, you are, uh, if your software works hard, you cannot an add any functionality and uh, make it bigger to support bigger customers because support will not allow you. And of course, you can extend your functionality if your performance is nice. Otherwise, all resources will be uh, spent to make it work as it is. So performance really matters. Uh, let performance lead your backlog. Uh, I would suggest that uh, every sprint, if you're working with Scrum or every period of your uh, development should be dedicated to performance issues it will always pay itself. And of course, we cannot have just a performance uh, turbo button. We cannot just uh, do one action or press a magic button and performance will increase. It will be step by step, drop by drop. Uh, every little thing, every little um, improvement will increase your performance. Let's go. How are you going to catch the demon? How are you going to measure the performance? You must know, if you know, or if you already know, that's fine. We never ever use daytime class for measuring performance. It is not uh, uh, 
this class is not for this. It doesn't have enough uh, functionality for this. So we forget about date time class for measuring performance. The most matching class is time span. It is fast and easy. Uh, you can place it in any part of your code and it will always help. If you are a performance priest, if you uh, feel that measuring performance uh, need, uh, needs to be uh, performed in a professional way, you can install something like benchmark.net library. Uh, there is a link in the uh, lower part of the uh, slide. Uh, this library gives uh, details, many details for uh, uh, for the measured code, for measured method, and so on. So if you feel that your project must be evaluated properly, please, you are welcome to use benchmark.net library. In this case, if everything is done, uh, the software is written and uh, um, shipped to customer, but you don't uh, have not provided any uh, performance measurements. You will use uh, various profilers to measure how fast and or how slow your software works. They are numerous, like software perfume. Uh, JetBrain, Dot Trace, and of course many others. But uh, as uh, I will repeat, this will be uh, this can be done when the software is ready, and you need to check your performance. Well, these uh, tools are enough to make a general view uh, about how good your software works. So the first sin. Last, we shall talk about indiscriminate Boolean expressions. So what possible must be calculated out of loop? You, of course, uh, understand that if uh, your loop is heavy, it will be repeated many times and it will give no profit. So if you are able to calculate something out of loop, do it. Lightweight parts of expressions go first. If you have an expression that consists of uh, several parts, for example, a constant, a Boolean constant, and a, a calculating method or property, so lightweight parts go first always. You must remember that um, uh, that every part of the expression is uh, equally impossible, uh, e equally important. So uh, if you switch them, uh, I mean, if you swap them, it will not, it must not change anything. So lightweight a part of expression must go first. I will now show you a part of code that I have prepared for you and display how it's, how it works. Uh, first of all, first of all, I will show you. I have prepared a little class to uh, display uh, uh, measuring uh, results. Uh, it will uh, show headers for our table. It will show data for our table and uh, effectiveness of our uh, of our uh, method that we are going to evaluate. So let's go to last. Um, first, uh, there's uh, what I'm going to evaluate. First of all, we have uh, we have this uh, Boolean expression. This is uh, this method just generate a random Boolean constant, either true or false. It's not complicated. It's not heavy. It is executed uh, immediately. This is a calculated predicate. Uh, it requires some time to uh, get evaluated. Like here, you have a, bin, a large collection. Int collection is uh, 10 million elements. It calculates uh, number of odd numbers. 
in this collection. And then we are going to divide this number by two. It just to make this calculated predicate heavy. So light uh, part of the expression is uh, easy. Another part is hard. Another method to evaluate, first of all, sorry, let's make it equal. Uh, first part of the expression is heavy. Another one is a random bool constant. So let's execute it. You see that light, first light, then heavy uh, uh, expression is almost always winning in 70%. Uh, why almost always? Because uh, probably here uh, a random bool value is false. So we need, uh, if it is false, then we evaluate this predicate. So we are giving our measurements uh, to a chance. And even in this case, uh, light and then heavy predicate win and uh, see uh, uh, how much the victor is. It is very, very low values. And here are uh, hundreds of milliseconds. So if you put the lightweight expression first, uh, I'm sure that uh, performance will uh, performance will increase. Uh, Sometimes I've seen that in code, uh, people place uh, some mandatory calculations. For example, let's imagine that this must be calculated always because it has some side effects. It is impossible to do. If, if this must be executed in any case, it must be executed before the expression evaluation. First of all, uh, there is another problem that if this gives some Boolean results and uh, does some action, it uh, breaks the single responsibility principle because uh, it gives sides effects. It must not be so. If we have it like a predicate, it must only give us a Boolean results without any side effects. In case you have uh, this problem uh, implemented. So calculate everything that must be calculated before the expression. I hope you, uh, I hope I uh, speak clearly and you understand. Otherwise, please ask questions. And the biggest uh, type of font says optimize, always optimize because there is always a place for optimization of your booleans. For example, I have a little example. Uh, let me paste it into the chat. And this, while you are listening to me, you can try to optimize this, uh, optimize this uh, boolean expression. First, uh, there is one uh, tip for those uh, who have uh, less uh, experience. If you see that in the Boolean expression is a constant, false or true, it means that this expression can be simplified. It is always so. So if you see false or true, start optimization. And by the way, you know that uh, the famous Shakespeare uh, question is now resolved, B or not B is always true. So this is the answer. He, he said, this is the question. So I'm telling, this is the answer. Let's proceed. Gluttony. Memory and performance consumption in strings manipulations. String manipulations 
are always greedy. They always, uh, they can eat a lot of uh, memory and a lot of, and imp uh, impact uh, seriously on uh, performance. So that's why be always careful working with uh, strings. If you forgot, strings are the immutable class. It means that we never, uh, that, that strings, when we change something in strings, they are not actually change the object itself. Each time we make some uh, any change, uh, a new uh, string object is created. Well, it looks uh, not that important if you are talking about uh, short strings like hello world, but uh, if uh, strings take uh, like hundreds of uh, symbols and it can be up to two gigabytes, that could be a real performance issue. So when you have big strings and uh, many iterations to uh, manipulate them, please use other um, uh, other uh, means. Like, of course, there is a string builder. You must have heard about it a lot. String builder uh, can optimize working with strings because its uh, value is mutable. So whenever we change the uh, value of a string builder, uh, it doesn't create new instance. Instead, it changes the value itself. So it can help uh, in such situations when we need to concatenate a lot or pr probably uh, delete uh, substrings from a string. This will help. And uh, there's another uh, like uh, little, little thing, interesting thing that we can use, use collections instead of strings when we need to um, concatenate uh, a lot of strings. It can be used when we are building a, a query for uh, an SQL query, or we create a, a list. So instead of uh, gluing a string plus comma or string plus, an, plus separator, we can use a collection and then use string join to put it all together. Of course, I will not let you believe myself by word. I will show you it in an example. By the way, uh, I will show you examples in two platforms in uh, .NET Framework 4.8 and uh, .NET 7. Why? Because it turned out that there are a lot of changes and what can be uh, uh, what can have good performance in uh, .NET Framework is uh, totally a loser in uh, in .NET 7 and vice versa. So in this test for .NET uh, Framework 4.8, we shall try to concatenate, concatenate using uh, usual string, you see it? So we take a string, add a comma, and another string, a random string. Then we try uh, to concatenate with the string builder using append method. And then we'll try to concatenate using a list. We shall take, uh, we shall not uh, uh, take any type of uh, list. We shall make an enumerable uh, collection and make a string join. So less words, more actions. Let's start. Do you see it? String is has an awful performance, just an awful performance. String builder and list are almost equal. You see, sometimes uh, the winner is list, sometimes string builder. So we can uh, pick both. For me personally, uh, for uh, such concatenating issues, I prefer lists.
I mean collections, not list, but collections. And string is always a loser. In our case, string builder was a winner in 60% of uh, measurements and list in 40. Mm -hmm. But it can happen uh, in another measurement. It can be quite another. Let's try again. String builder is winning. Now list is winning. So who is going to be the winner today? The, now the list is the winner. So uh, string builder and list show us uh, almost equal performance. So we can pick any. But uh, I have not said, but I will say now you must always uh, what I'm right now saying is not uh, and uh, truth for every uh, for every code for every situation. You must always measure your performance, and it depends radically, dramatically, on what code you are writing, what actions you are doing. So. This is what I'm showing is you just uh, a method to measure and an example for measuring, but you must always do it for yourself. Of course, there are uh, some uh, good rules, like in this case, string builder is uh, better for uh, numerous uh, actions than uh, strings, but choose uh, wisely what you need to do. Maybe if your uh, uh, manipulations are not uh, complicated, you can use just strings. Okay. Ah, no, let's go back. Still go back and I will uh, show you the performance of the same uh, actions, but in .NET uh, 7, yes, in .NET 7. Let's see who is going to be the winner in this case. And nothing changed. These two guys are competing equally and string is a loser. But probably string builder is better now. I must say that um, uh, with each new version of .NET, in particular in .NET 7, they invest uh, many efforts into performance and you will see uh, like wonderful changes uh, in uh, upcoming uh, tests. You see the stream builder has one. So this is a good tool. Stream builder is a good tool. Uh, string create plus uh, plus span sample is missing. Yes, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, but we shall discuss a uh, span uh, a little bit later. Not with strings. If it is uh, um, Ivan, can, oh. There's a code for test. Okay, a little bit later, we shall uh, try to uh, run this uh, code. Okay. Perhaps in the end, not to break the, not to break the, uh, our uh, discussions. So, pride. Why one collection is better than another? Well, there, there are a lot of collections and I was not able and we don't have time to discuss each of them. But we will show, discuss the most known. So we are going to see array, to see list, to see hash set. Uh, to, we shall take a concurrent bag as an example of uh, a concurrent non-blocking collections. 
and we shall uh, touch span and memory as uh, a new uh, new um, types that were added in .NET 7. So um, as you see, our classic collections, most uh, all of them are um, based on I enumerable interface. This is our king of collections. It provides a get enumerator that allow us uh, to enumerate them in uh, some loops. Uh, all of the uh, collections uh, implement also I list collection that give us more that give uh, more uh, functionality to these collections. Some of them uh, provide uh, implement I collection that gives even more and so on. So less words, more actions. Let's test all these collections. Sorry. What are we are going to test? Let's see. The test will be will uh, consist of uh, several tests. First of all, we are going to test uh, materialization. So we are creating a uh, uh, enumerable collection. Uh, it will look like this: one hundred thousand elements. A string elements will be in this collection. And then we are going to materialize them into a certain type, into array, into list, into hash set, and into concurrent back. You are not seeing here uh, span and memory, because this is the test for .NET Framework uh, 4.8. Here, we don't have that, those types. After that, we shall try to calculate maximum value using uh, uh, calculate uh, maximum value in array list hash set and bag, concurrent bag. Then we'll try to add an element. Then we'll try to sort the collection. And after that, and after that, we shall see. Let's run. So, materialization. You see the hash set is the winner. I wouldn't say that it wins much, but still it is the winner. Uh, when are we are using hash set? Hash set is when we need um, a unique, uh, a collection with unique values, with distinct values, and we don't need the order. It is useful when we need to uh, keep some parameters uh, to keep IDs. It is very uh, useful and uh, comfortable to use for IDs. Instead, if you uh, want to access uh, elements for collections by index, this is a list or an array. And you see that the loser is a concurrent back. Why is it so? Because uh, this is non-blocking collections and it uses locks. So probably concurrent back should not be used in .NET framework when we don't need, when we don't have multi-threading, uh, uh, multi-threading uh, software. So, so hash set is the best uh, choice. Let's calculate maximum value and see who is the best for this. Hmm, very weird. Hash set is the winner again. Who could expect? And Concrete back is again the loser. So hash set gives us good performance uh, again. And now this pay attention. All my code 
look what the different it is. So hundreds times hash set is winning. Let's try to add an element. Who is going to win this time? Hmm, very strange. But we don't have hash set. In general, list is the winner. What does it show to us? It shows that it always depends on what you're doing, what your task is. You cannot just pick a hash set for every uh, collection uh, manipulation. See what you're doing, measure before you implement. For, uh, for different situations, different collections might, could work better. So let's sort those collections. Do you see it? It's a miracle. A concurrent bag was a loser in the first evaluation, in the first test, and now it is the winner. Look what the numbers are. Like a thousand, ten thousandths part of a uh, second. And list is the loser. So, uh, so even it's very clearly just one hundred percent concurrent bag is the winner and list is the loser. And I would like to say uh, some words about one more thing in collections. You know that uh, we have high numberable uh, collections, and when we uh, it's just uh, let's say a query in memory that will be materialized when we want to access uh, their data. Uh, so I've seen many parts of code uh, where uh, they pass parameters as enumerable or declare uh, variables or method as enumerable, not thinking if it's worth it or no. Let's go back to code. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, we have an in collection and it is uh, an enumerable, as you see. But let's make it better. It is uh, enumerable. Uh, almost always when we declare a collection, we are going to use it. So if you are not 100% sure that you need just this uh, non-materialized collection, then better use a certain type. Choose a type of a collection like hash set or list and uh, assign uh, a parameter using this type, not enumerable. Enumerable is useful when uh, your method is uh, going to accept different kind of collections. But if you accept hash set, so let the parameter be hash set, because uh, uh, after that you will anyway to materialize this collection. So uh, let's make a quick test. In this case, uh, this is the material materialization of the int collection, and this is the materialization of sprint collection. So we have one collection and two materialization. In this case, when we are going to materialize first and then make an action number one and action number two, what is going to give us a better performance? Uh, ah, it's still running. Uh, okay. All right. You see that multiple uh, materialization in this case are working better. Though it is weird. 
but this is for framework. Oh. One win for a single materialization. Uh, single materialization uh, is this one, uh, the second test. Let's try the same on uh, .NET framework. H. All the same tests. We shall make it uh, quicker now. But let's run it because there are, might be some wonderful things here to see we don't see a hash set in winners rather we see hash set in losers instead we see a new uh, type of uh, let's say collection it's quite a new type we cannot even call it a collection but let's let it be so here memory and span are the winnings the winners uh, what are spans? Uh, both of them are structures that are pointing to a, a um, set of uh, some amount of memory and uh, span is uh, uh, allocated in stack and memory in heap. So I will not give too much details, but tell you that it is a very good uh, development tool so whenever it is possible, whenever you want to replace your um, array and manipulations, please welcome. Memory and span are waiting for you. You see that either memory or span are uh, winning in materialization. Let's calculate max value in our arrays and uh, in our collections and see again that now the span is the winner and sometimes memory is happening. So this is the thing that we should pick that could that should be our choice in uh, uh, in finding a maximum of materialization. Let's try if it that uh, efficient in adding elements. You see that memory is again a winner. And by the way, Yes, memory is the winner. Let's see how uh, adding an element is uh, looks like in .NET. Uh, adding an element looks like... Pay attention. Uh, this is the uh, complicated way of adding an element. And even in this case, span is the winner. So we are appending a new element to uh, an array, converting it into array again, and creating a span over it. And even now, the span is the winner, or, or the memory is the winner, but uh, it is quite the same. It is quite the same here. Let's proceed. Let's see who is the best sorter uh, in .NET 7. No way. Concurrent back and array who are always the last in .NET framework now show a wonderful, marvelous performance. Just look and concurrent back what values it shows. Comparing to hash set who was our favorite in .NET framework. Even span and memory doesn't give that performance as concurrent back and pay attention and array. So this uh, um, confirms my words that pick the best uh, um, tools for your needs. In this case, the best collections for your needs. There's no single answer. And let's make the test for um, multiple or single materializations for i enumerables. Multiple materialization is winning again. Oh, that is strange. I would say that 
Chris Sharper hates multiple materialization. Okay, multiple materialization one again. Let it be so. So this is the end of the test of the uh, of our of our collections, but it is not the end of our presentation as someone might expect. We are going to sloth who is the laziest look. Two words about what we are testing. We are testing the most classical and most ancient <clears throat> loop as four. Uh, it is a rel relative for while loop or do while loop. They are all working uh, with uh, conditions. So they uh, are iterating while condition is true. They have, uh, of course, slightly different uh, 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 syntax, but in general, they are working based on condition. There is for each, it's special for each, a special tool for uh, enumerating uh, collections based on I enumerable. So it gets the enumerator and enumerates uh, elements of collections using it. There is a list for each. It, uh, I will not tell about uh, inner implementation because it was changed from one uh, version of, of .NET from one to another. Uh, all I can say about it is, is that um, it is an extension for iList and uh, context is not preserved. So it accepts a Lambda function as a parameter. And if, if you assign some uh, local uh, variables inside this Lambda, it will not be accessible outside. Link you. Uh, all, um, almost all of us know uh, Link you, and uh, I'm sure that uh, you use it widely. Uh, but you must remember that's a nice tool, a comfortable tool, but it is not always the best solution. Sometimes a usual for each beats uh, all uh, advantages of Link. Link in general is just a syntax sugar that hides a uh, regular, um, uh, regular uh, loops like for each of four but uh, it has uh, some advantages like extensions, uh, different grouping, sorting, and so on. So it is easier to use already tools than implement something by, my, by yourself. Uh, you must know that there, uh, there are I enumerable and I queryable uh, interfaces. Uh, they are both uh, might, can be used in a link queue. A queryable is uh, useful when you want to drag something from um, uh, database because uh, if you use I enumerable collections for taking data from database, you will get all the data from uh, your query and will sort and filter it in um, in your code. While I queryable filters it uh, on SQL side and brings you only what you wanted. So uh, when you work with uh, database, iQueryable is more preferable than iNumerable. But iQueryable is the um, uh, uh, relative of the enumerable, so uh, they provide similar possibilities. Any or count, this is the method of uh, link you. If you want to know if the collection is empty, never ever use count because uh, you don't need to know how many elements there are. You want to know if there's empty and uh, there is a special method is any. So uh, any uh, is a better solution for this. Uh, when you want to know if all, um, all, uh, all elements match your condition better use use uh, all method instead of where it is uh, gives a better performance remember about materialization that link you uh, uh, gives us uh, just a query because a query is the even in the title of this uh, functionality it gives only a query and after you've done everything that you want, sorting, grouping and so on, you will have to materialize your 
data. We, are, we have spoken about it already. There is a good tool, SPLinkU. It gives, uh, uh, if you place a parallel um, method in the chain of your query, it will give you, uh, sometimes it will give you more performance because it will uh, execute your uh, code in parallel. Remember that parallel execution is not uh, always uh, the best choice for you. If you don't have too much uh, data, if your data is not in, is not numerous or is not heavy enough, it will give no performance. It will even decrease your performance because it will spend time for um, uh, some additional actions, uh, inner actions for parallel link. Parallel uh, execution is for heavy uh, methods, expensive methods, and for big amount of data. Otherwise, use uh, usual uh, for each uh, usual methods, usual loops, and we have uh, a parallel uh, uh, loops. Uh, it is the uh, parallel uh, namespace, will, which gives us four or for each uh, methods. It will execute our code. It, it accepts lambda again. It accepts collection um, as um, parameters and will execute our uh, Lambda expression in parallel. It chooses itself. It has inner logic how to execute it in parallel or usual loop. So it, again, I repeat, it will not always bring you relief. Sometimes it could be even worse. So test before you use and uh, uh, just uh, see, do you really need parallel execution or not. So again, let's go. I have uh, always, uh, I have prepared to some uh, tests for sloth testing. Uh, so who is the most lazy loop? So we have uh, an easy testing. Let's calculate odd elements in our collection. So first we, we shall test it using just a usual for loop. Then we shall use for each loop. Then we shall look parallel for each loop. And we shall test list for each. Okay. Let's run it. Re reminding you that now we are testing .NET framework. Good old for each is a winner. And for each list is the least performative. You see that you shouldn't uh, usually invent uh, no wheels, just use your for each and everything will be fine. Well, I have uh, a lot of elements here. I believe it's 10 million elements. So you see that's why sometimes parallel execution is winning. That's normal. But anyway, 73% uh, times for each was the winner. And for each list is the most preferable in this particular task. Let's do quite the same for uh, .NET. And let's see if .NET 7 has something to uh, shock us with. Jesus Christ, for each list that was the loser uh, in the previous test now is the most effective and link you uh, which was something in the middle now is the loser so let's now think if the all the comfort of link you is useful sometimes it is but in this case it is not the same 70 percent now go of uh, victory go now to forage list and uh, still uh, sometimes it happens that forage is effective so 
it's classic. You can get rid of classic ask for each. Nicola, sorry, we have to speed up a bit because uh, we a bit out of time. Okay. Okay, so we have a couple more scenes, but let's go faster. It will go faster, I think. Uh, run from temptation to use these things in loops. If you have loops and if you have uh, never try to avoid database queries and all kinds of uh, network requests in loops. So network request can be HTTP, can be TCP request, it can be WCF requests, uh, better unite them, make one single request instead of uh, many uh, small, smaller requests. Salam instead or greet instead, cache, cache always helps. And don't drag all the data, drag all only that data that you need. So in, instead of select all, type select ID and caption, for example. So uh, as we don't have too much time, uh, I will show you the example only for .NET Framework because um, uh, because in this case, I'm sorry, I lost my mouse. Oh no. Sorry, sorry, I lost my mouth. I found my mouth. Uh, let's make it. Okay, let's run it. In this, uh, in this example, in this example, uh, I'm, I will show you the code now. Uh, I'm testing uh, a separate uh, query, uh, one query, like uh, we united in one query and a slightly optimized query. Let's see how it looks like. Um, so there is, uh, there is a test like request in multiple queries. So ju I just run in loop. I just run in loop. 50 times one request to a query uh, to a database, 50 times single query. Uh, then after that, I'm using the same query, but uh, artificially uh, join it using union. So in fact, uh, I take 50 queries and stick them together. And there is a, a, an optimized query that when I don't, don't stick all the queries, it also query, but I stick the uh, query condition, where condition. I just stick IDs together. Okay. So uh, let's see the results. Optimized query is always the winner, except one time, let's uh, say it a threshold. Separate queries, so 50 separate queries are the losers. So optimize your uh, querying or your requests to, uh, to a database or uh, network before execution. Uh, let's go on. Greed. These guys that are displayed here require system resources because all of them, if you are talking about Microsoft Windows, all of them are based on uh, uh, system handlers or system descriptors files, registry, locks, different locks that we have, like monitor, like uh, semaphores, mutex, and so on. They all uh, eat uh, descriptors. And there's a, a limited number of descriptors. Uh, connections are, uh, all are requiring system descriptors uh, resources too. So uh, use them wisely. If you don't need locks, please don't use locks. Uh, even if you are in, uh, uh, if you are developing a multi-threading uh, uh, application, please think if you need locks. Maybe there are other things that work better. Uh, there are special tools like if you say lock, uh, like a uh, word lock, and in brackets you said you say. Um, um, I++, for example, just uh, incrimination. 
so there is a better way to do it like um, a special method to uh, increase uh, your variable uh, in, tr in thread safe mode so use special tools for locks this is a uh, this is a topic for a separate presentation no, not uh, uh, spend too much time on it so use wisely because uh, um, there is limited number of uh, system uh, descriptions and if you run out of it you have the software will have much much problems uh, so let's stop this test uh, and we'll, let's run quickly a grid test it is about locks it is about locks. Uh, I will show you a difference. Show you the difference. Uh, here we have uh, incrimination uh, increasing of a, of a variable using locks. And here is, uh, aha. It is numeral locks, uh, uh, numerous locks. It is one lock for the whole uh, um, loop. And uh, this is without any locks. Let's try to execute it. So no lock always wins, almost always. Sometimes one lock is effective, so consider it also. If you still use lock, better use one lock for the whole um, set of iterations than uh, a lock for every iteration. So we, we shall skip again the uh, .NET 7 test. It looks quite the same. And let's go back, back to our uh, presentation and to the last scene is wrath or anger, furious error handling. So there is a holy war. Uh, what we shall use to, man to maintain our uh, code uh, error, error management. Is it error code or exception? You must remember that exceptions are exceptional. We shall not use it every now and then. We use it in special cases we, where we cannot predict an er error. If you know that an error can happen, it use just uh, an if statement or a switch statement. It is always better instead of using exceptions. Uh, let he who has no sin throw first exception. Be, be careful about that. Let's try to test it. It's very easy uh, and very easy test. Ouch. My mouse is dying. It's an easy test, which looks like uh, we shall here, we shall not that, ah, that. Uh, we shall try to divide by zero. So here, uh, 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 we are trying to divide by uh, some value, but sometimes this value is zero. So uh, if uh, in this case, if uh, we are dividing by zero, we're checking it using a ternary uh, operator. And in this case, we are turning zero. Another way is uh, using the same. We are not checking what we are dividing, what we are dividing by. Instead, we are trying to catch the uh, division by zero exception. Let's try what is more effective. And we see there error cause is always the winner. Try catch takes some time. So if you can avoid exception, throwing and catching exception, it, it is always better. Of course, you cannot uh, develop without uh, using try catch, but remember that it has its cost. You have to pay. So, and our final, uh, our final um, uh, slide is escape from sin. Try to avoid the expensive operation. It doesn't mean that they are forbidden. They are expensive. Regular expression. 
it's a fugu fish. If, if, if you know how to prepare it, do it. But if uh, you are not sure, um, it can take lots of time. Uh, your regular expression cannot, can be not effective. In this case, it makes even worse and sometimes very worse. So uh, if you are uh, a professional, use it. If you are not, practice, but always be sure what you're doing. So regular special expression is uh, uh, dangerous. Third party components, it is a cat in a bag. You never know uh, its true uh, performance. So test first and be sure that, uh, and uh, remember that you cannot affect it. So once you, you deliver it to a customer, there's no way back until the next release, at least. So evaluate before test all performance tests before you use third party components. And warranted locks. It is the original sin of concurrency. Uh, concurrent uh, development always requires uh, some locks uh, or semaphores or mutexes or whatever different kind of locks. So uh, be sure that use, you're using it wisely. If you really need it, use it. If you are good without it, do not. If you are not multi-threading uh, developer, do not. So this is a powerful tool, but it is expensive. Sterilization and desterilization is a concealed bomb. You never know. Uh, there is always a price for uh, this. So if you're using something like WCF, it is sterilization. Maybe you can find a better solution than WCF or using any other technology that requires sterilization. Think. Remember that usually, I don't have a test for it, but usually uh, JSON uh, serialization is a little bit faster than uh, than XML deserialization. Well, uh, Newton G uh, JSON, it's not an um, adver advertisement, but a Newton JSON is rather a good library for that. Uh, boxing and unboxing, beware of knockout. Boxing is expensive, so instead of using array of uh, object, use uh, generic uh, components. So, but uh, using list uh, of T, I mean um, a generic list, then using list of objects because you will have unnecessary boxing. So, uh, uh, so I would say. That's uh, all from my side. If you have questions, please do. Please do. I will try to execute the code that uh, that Ivan uh, provided for us. Those who are interested, uh, you can have a look. If you are not interested, then good luck. Or, or give me some questions. Hey guys, if uh, someone has any questions, please uh, ask, just unmute and ask or use chat for this. Uh, I think we still have maybe two minutes for answering your questions. Uh, okay. Well, uh, usually there are two cases when there are no questions and everything is clear and when nothing is clear. I hope that my speech was useful and you have understand everything. <laughs>